Welcome back to IBL South by Southwest Expert Showcase. I'm here with Culture Craig from Culture Amp. Craig, what are we going to be talking about today? What, what Man, we can, this week? we can talk about whatever you'd like to talk about around workplace culture, organizational culture, how we, how we behave, how we work. It's always fascinated me. It's what I'm here talking about this week. So we're doing a session around difficult conversations and how tech can enable those in organizations. There's some really amazing tools out there to help organizations listen, talk, you know, and do the more human stuff, which I think is mm. interesting. Like, but that's the point. How, you know, there are tools that can help bring more human to the workplace. Um, and it just it just keeps coming up that we need more of that. It, it's proven in the research, and you know, especially now as we're rethinking what's going to look like next. So yeah, I'm I'm here in anything anything workplace culture. I'm I'm all I'm all about it. Yeah. What does the future of this space look like? I think the first thing I'd say to that is anybody that tells you they know, <laughs> I would I would be concerned about. Um, but I do think that we are really sitting. I, I like people keep calling the great resignation. Um, but I just keep coming back to this, like the great transformation, right? I think that we are, a lot of things are shifting. I think a lot of things are shifting that have been wanting to shift for a long time, but we have a moment in time, an opportunity. Um, you know, it's not often, there's, there's a powerful force and motivator for humans, which is inertia. Like sometimes we do things because it's just the way we've been doing them. Yeah. And when you have large systems in that way, you can have a lot of people that want something different. It takes an inordinate amount of, of, of effort and ability to shift. However, in, in generations, there are moments where the handbrake is pulled. And I think in a lot of ways, COVID pulled the handbrake on that, right? And, and, and was long enough, two years, to like force us out of things. And things shifted. And now we're going <laughs> to, I feel like it's called the great thawing. We're going to start to thaw. And when we do, things are going to change naturally. But I'm really, my big thing in the world is really calling to people and saying, this is a moment in time. If you're passionate about, you know, if you've talked about it, it could be better. It should be better. Or how it should look. This is the this is the moment in time to get to take some sort of action, be part of the change because there's a moment that we can really rethink and reshape what it looks like. I think you're going to see things at a high level, flexibility, right? Where we work, how we work. Um, I think I think management is going to change a lot. I've often I've said before that you know the future is going to be about managers and the, and managers are going to disappear. But I kind of say that tongue in cheek, but I think the idea of a manager is going to change. What we need for managers, leaders, um, they're going to become more, truly get in that place we've talked about, supporting employees, helping employees grow. What is their path? What is their journey? Um, this, this kind of command and control structure and hierarchical structure, I think, is going to start to dissolve. Uh, we're going to see new organizational models take place. Like, we've seen stuff like this. You know, we saw Zappos with, you know, Holacracy a few years back, and there's a, a few different kind of models. But I think we're going to start to see that come to life, more concentric circles versus triangles. So high level, but uh, hold on, it's it's gonna it's gonna look a lot different. Yeah, and and tell us a little bit about I, I've heard this concept of collaboration, economy, and a lot of people coming together to work on one project. And when you say that the managerial structure might be shifting, is it that these people are coming alongside each other with one common vision and one common goal? Yeah. Like, I think a lot about circles. I think humans mm. humans naturally organize themselves in circles. I mean, if you even go back way back in like, what did we do when we were tribal? We sat around fires, we communicated, yeah. we touched stories, we sit in circles. We're also pack animals. Like, really, fundamentally, uh, you know, at a very primitive level, we do find leaders. You know, we do look for leaders in all kinds of places, in all kinds of ways. We're not safe alone. We've always needed to band together. So I think that's that's in us. So I think when you talk about this collaborative cultures, it does look a lot like these circles, you know, and you see these models, I mean, an idea kind of where you can put together, a project can happen, people can come together, find the right tools, resources, band together. There should usually be a lead, right? There will be a lead of some sort. And there might be multiple leads in different ways. But then when that project's over, it can dissolve and move and it can ebb and flow. And we can see that in organizations and we can see it, probably you will see it outside of organizations. People organize themselves, right? It's more efficient. Um, I was just listening to something the other day, you know, many large organizations the idea of reorgs is just a common thing. Reorgs are one of the biggest. Nobody ever likes a reorg. No one's ever talked positively about one. And watching people go through reorgs, it's like an eight-month process, you know. And I, I think to myself, if we could truly measure the efficiency of employees and work, and like how much is that cost, and everybody's feeling demoralized afterwards. And I think reorgs are just simply companies working inside of a triangle system trying to restructure, and it's very painful where you think about it in like these concentric circles where we can ebb and flow, and like that project moved. Now I have 20% of my resource. What's another team I can be part of? Boom, let's do that. Um, I think it's a more human kind of 
approach to the same sort of thing. Like we do need companies grow, organizations grow, we grow, we change, so we need to reorganize. But it, everything goes back to we can do it in a more human way. Mm. I was going to ask if somebody's watching and and they'd like to learn what trait do they need to adopt to be equipped for this this movement. Um, it, it seems like an open mindedness. Add some flexibility um, would be a really in the human trait. Yeah. Two things come to mind when you ask that question. You say, what trait? I mean, I think one is that I've often spoke, you know, I work with organizations, so I talk a lot about fixing it, right? What policies, mm -hmm. procedures, how do we, you know, they're taking large sets of data, like from tools like CultureAmp, to make data informed decisions about their people. But I keep coming back to like, I mean, there's a need for that, but honestly, to fix it, and I'm pointing outwards, we got to fix it, mm -hmm. pointing inwards, right? Yeah. So when you say what trait, I think if everybody is willing to do some of their own work and understand what part of your frustrations, the things in the world, are really about you, much part are about the things that are going on, you know, because so many of us managers, leaders react from that place. I think the other thing you said, what trait? What's your best trait? You know, like that's the cool part. Like I think if we're authentic and we stop trying to be what we think other people need us to be and we get clear and sometimes look, maybe through your 20s, that's what the work is about. You know, it's okay. It doesn't mean you're supposed to wake up and know that. But I think if, if people are willing to stop trying to be a trait or there's this trait, I think it's like, wow, I'm a writer. Wow, I naturally love spreadsheets and organizing things. Wow, I love to communicate this way. And go do that. You're going to be the most successful. Um, teams are going to thrive. And I also, you can get on a team if people can communicate and say, like, wow, like, friends, I have ADHD. Like, you probably don't want me on the hardcore detail stuff. But big picture, relationship, being out, communicating, like, that's my role on a team. So let's, instead of, like, fighting against each other, you didn't do this or do that, let's start building teams around what we bring to the table, try to mitigate our, our, our what we're not as strong at and really amplify what we're really strong at. So the trait is whatever trait that is your biggest trait, and the work is figuring that out. See, it sounds so easy, but, like, again, I'd say to anybody listening, if, if that's, like, what do you mean? It's cool. Like, part of the journey is figuring out, playing, what doesn't work, you know? What are those bad job experiences? Just, my one is just don't stay in it too long. Keep moving. I love this. I love this. Now, where can our viewers find you, Culture Craig? Yeah, I mean, look, uh, LinkedIn's always been my spot, so please follow me, you know, Culture Craig LinkedIn. You'll see me there. Also, Twitter, at Culture Craig. Um, check out CultureAmp.com is my company, but I'll say one more thing. One of, like, real, <laughs> what a wild journey in my career, but um, we've been building community at Culture Amp. So we've set up Culture First chapters. We have over 70 chapters globally. Go to chapters.culturefirst.com. Check it out. A lot of them are still virtual. They're going to be in person. And if you're the kind of person that wants to start this conversation, you know, get in touch. We can have a conversation about that and, you, you know, help build another chapter. So we're really trying to bring this to life. You know, we can't do it alone. We have to do it in community. We have to do it. And that's, I guess, part of the theme of this change. So that's another place to find that. Well, thank you for sharing all this wisdom with us. Today. Yeah, man. Thanks for having me and, like, yeah. getting to know about Ibble. Pretty cool. All right. Thank you. Thanks, man.